Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go through all of the uh, menu settings in the Nikon uh, D5100. Uh, this is going to be the first part of many videos of this camera and so we're going to dive straight in with everything that's in the menu. Obviously to access the menu, use the menu button up here and that takes you straight in. Uh, it might go into the playback menu, depends if you've been in there already uh, touching stuff. Okay, so let's have a look here what we've got. First icon you'll see up here is the play and that takes you into the playback menu. You can access these icons by using the D-pad, uh, the left and right arrows on the uh, on the buttons next to the OK button and then you can go up and down through them and to get over into the main settings just press the right arrow. Okay so the first one we've got is delete. Obviously that deletes images off of the memory card. You can either delete selected images select different dates to delete images or delete everything. Remember this is actually different than format this is just delete not format but if you want to delete all your images you can do so there. Next is playback folder this is the name of the folder that the camera uh, searches images so when you press the play button uh, it will search all the folders on the card you can either have current or you can select all and so you can have different folders in there that the camera will display. Next one here is playback display options uh, you've got a list of things here with uh, ticks next to them. What this is for is when you take an image and then you review it in the play menu, in the play screen, um, you can actually scroll through all sorts of different information screens uh, which are overlaid onto the photograph. And this is telling you which ones at the moment will come up. Um, so once I've taken an image, I have different screens. I've got one that will be just the image on its own. I can then press um, the arrow key and I'll get another image that displays the highlights I'll then get another screen which overlays all the shooting data like all the settings and then I'll get another one with an overview of everything so you can change which of these you want displayed um, after you've taken your photo and it's good that because you can sort of see the settings instantly that you've just used uh, the highlight one I'd really recommend you have on because that will flash um, all the areas that are blown out so you can readjust your image if you have to. Image review, this is if the camera instantly displays a photo after you've taken it on the rear screen. If you turn that off the screen will stay blank. Um, it's up to you what you want on that. Sometimes I turn that off because it does get quite annoying having the image uh, flash up in your face all the time. Rotate tool, um, if you take a image in um, portrait mode that will automatically rotate it. Next one we have a slideshow, you can make a little slideshow um, to play on the screen here and you can select the uh, interval between the frames. Uh, you've got the direct print uh, thing here, I've never actually used this on any camera ever before. I'm sure some people do use it though. Uh, you can select uh, all your images there and send them directly to your printer. And that's it for the playback menu. Okay, so the next menu is the shooting menu first one we've got here is colour space. Um, I'd recommend you leave this in sRGB. Um, it's a much more common uh, sort of common thing. Um, you can use Adobe RGB if you want but uh, sRGB is the standard. Active delighting, uh, you can turn this to auto or extra high, high, normal or low. Um, what this does is it kind of brings up the shadows and tones down the highlights in images kind of like a dynamic range control. Personally I leave this off because I shoot in RAW so it's not applicable but if you shoot in uh, JPEG then you can select any one of those you want. This item here is actually greyed out and uh, this is high dynamic range. If you shoot in JPEG format you can actually use this because I'm shooting in RAW it's greyed out and what this would do is it will take a number of different exposures I think it's uh, two exposures on this camera and it will expose for the highlights and then expose for the shadows and it will then automatically merge those two photos into one to give you an HDR image um, it's not going to give you one of those crazy over the top HDRs that you quite often see um, this just sort of combines the shadows and the highlights into one good exposure so that's quite a neat little thing um, if you're shooting high dynamic range scenes long exposure noise reduction if you're shooting anything over a couple of seconds um, you can have the camera automatically apply noise reduction to the image 
but what that will do is actually it will take another blank exposure of the same length of your original photo to kind of map out the noisy areas and um, so if you do a five second exposure you then have to wait another five seconds um, for it to take the long exposure noise reduction photo um, before you can use the camera again so it does work quite well but just bear in mind you've got um, the same amount of time again to wait before you can take your next shot. High ISO noise reduction obviously when you shoot higher ISOs your images do uh, get digital noise in them so this can automatically um, kind of help deal with that. Uh, again because I shoot RAW this won't be applicable um, if you're shooting JPEG you can put it on whichever one you want. Just bear in mind high can be a bit too much it might sort of smudge the details slightly and um, if you're going to use it I would go for normal or low ideally you want it off and then you can add it in uh, Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever editing program you use. ISO sensitivity settings if we enter this one um, here you've got your main ISO sensitivity menu you can choose from uh, 100 all the way up to the high settings high 1, high 2 and um, so that's your what your camera ISO is set up. Then you've got this section down here which is auto ISO um, I'm going to do a video on that, uh, a separate video because this is a really good feature uh, briefly basically what this does is you set a shutter speed that you don't want the camera to fall below you set an ISO sensitivity that you don't want the camera to go above you then turn auto ISO on and the camera will always keep the, uh, the shutter speed above what you've set but it will also always keep the ISO below what you've set um, so you can always get a good shutter speed and hopefully not too noisy images it takes another variable out of the exposure triangle all you have to then deal with is the uh, aperture really because the camera is doing these two by itself really good feature but I'll do another video on that release mode um, here we've got all the different types of release mode single frame continuous self timer delayed remote quick response and quiet shutter I talked about these in my other video for the info screen so I'm not going to go through those again and they're pretty self explanatory anyway. Multiple exposure this is similar to HDR but it's not at the same time basically what this does is you can just take a number of photos which you can uh, add in there uh, two, two or three, it's only two or three, I don't see the point of that uh, and then it will blend those two uh, photos together this isn't so much for dynamic range, this is just for creative effect. Um, you won't get the same sort of HDR style image out of that. It's just to do crazy fun things with. Next one down is movie settings. You've got all your different movie qualities here. Uh, 1920, 1080, 25 frames per second high quality. Uh, same at normal quality and then you've got uh, 24 frames per second. And you go all the way down to 640 by 44. Um, if your camera is set to PAL or to uh, NTSC, these will be slightly different. You might have 30 seconds. Uh, I think mine's on PAL or the other one. I always get them mixed up. Microphone, you can have it auto, high, medium, low, or off. That's self explanatory. Interval timer shooting. This is a really interesting one again, hidden away in the menu. Um, if you've seen time lapse uh, videos, this is how you do it. Um, you don't need loads of expensive equipment, you can do it straight from your camera. Uh, choose a start time, so you can actually set it to come on at certain times. You could set it up one evening and then it will start whenever you've told it to. Or you can start it straight away. So we'll click that. you then got interval. Um, this is the interval between the photos. So this is hours, this is minutes and that's seconds. So you could have a photo, say, every five seconds. Number of times is how many images you want the camera to take so it will keep going until it hits that number. Obviously the highest you can have is 999 um, so once you'd set that you'd click across and press on and that would then start taking a photo every five seconds until it had done 999 photos. Okay the next menu is the custom setting menu denoted by the little pencil. The first one we've got up here is reset custom settings. Uh, if you press that, that will reset everything that you've set before, so be careful there. First one is autofocus. You can see it's uh, red, so the red ones are autofocus, as you can see up there. First one is AFC priority selection. Uh, this one is um, oops, sorry. This one is release. 
or focus. So basically what this does is tells the camera what takes priority when you're in AFC mode, which is continuous focusing. Um, if you have it on release, it will take a photo regardless of whether the subject is in focus. If you have it on focus, it will only take a picture if there is something in focus. Um, so this has got its good points and its bad points. If you have it in focus, you're always guaranteed an in focus shot. It might not necessarily be what you wanted in focus, but something will be. Um, if you have it in release, you can usually rattle off shots quicker, um, but you're not guaranteed anything in the image to be in focus at all. The next one is the built-in AF Assist Illuminator. This is a little lamp at the front of the camera which lights up to help the AF system lock on. Um, I pretty much always leave this off, it's irritating, it blinds people and there's not really any need for it. Next one is Rangefinder. I've spoken about this in my other video about how to set up manual focus on a rangefinder. Uh, very quickly it's just a little dial in the viewfinder which tells you which way you need to turn the focus ring when you're manually focusing. Really, really good little thing there. Okay, the next one we're on to the exposure. Now it's changed to this kind of yellowy green colour. Um, EV steps for exposure control. You can change to one third or half a step. So when you're changing your shutter speed, you can either have it in one third increments or half step increments. Um, standard is one third. Um, you've got no real need to change that. I wouldn't have thought to be honest. Um, so I would leave it there for now. Shutter release button AEL off. You have it off or on. What this does is when you half press the shutter button, um, as well as focusing, it also can lock the exposure to what it was when you pressed it. Um, if you have it off, it will continually monitor the uh, exposure and change it. Um, this has its uses if you're doing sort of um, focus and recompose sort of stuff. This can work quite well, um, but it, just leave it off because the exposure is always changing. So. There's not many occasions where you're going to want that on. Auto off timers. You've got short, normal and long. All this does is tells the camera how long to keep the monitor on and uh, when to put the camera into standby. Um, obviously it saves battery life on short. Or if you put it on long, the camera sort of stays active longer. Self timer. You've got a number of different settings here. Again, you can access this through the info screen. Um, but on the info screen you can only set the self timer to whatever you've set here so you need to set it here first. Um, 5 seconds is usually about right for self timer but it depends how far away you need to sort of run out the way to get into the photo. Uh, number of shots, you can actually change how many shots the camera takes uh, when fired through the self timer which is pretty cool. Remote on duration, this is how long that the infrared sensors stay active for. Um, when you've got a remote control sort of connected to it, you can have it on for 15, 10, 5, or 1 minute. Beep! Irritating, turn it off, don't need it. ISO display, uh, this tells you um, in the viewfinder what the ISO is. Um, I would always leave that on because it's always good to know what your ISO is. Um, it will take the place of the frame count when you half press the shutter. Um, so I'd leave that on. File number sequence, uh, this tells the camera how to uh, number the images if you put a new memory card in or things like that or reset it. Um, I leave that off because then it just sort of keeps on going. Exposure delay mode, um, if you have this on, when you press the shutter button it will take a short amount of time before actually taking the image. Um, it's a bit like a mirror lockup sort of thing, um, so it kind of gives the camera a chance to steady itself. Um, it's good if you're on a tripod, but pretty useless handheld. Um, you can have that on or off. I'm not sure the exact duration, I think it's probably about two seconds. Uh, about one second it says there. So you press the button, the mirror flaps up, it waits a second, then it takes the shot. So it's good for sort of landscapes on a tripod, but anything else, you probably want that off. Print date, if you have that on, it will actually stamp the time and the date across the bottom of the photo kind of old school uh, compact style. I can't ever see a need for that but I know some people do need it um, for sort of archival work so it's there if you want it. Flash control for built in flash. If you're using the pop up flash you can either have it as TTL um, which is the standard that means that the uh, camera sorts all the flash out for you 
or you can manually set the flash power yourself. Uh, that's useful if you're using other speed lights and other lighting and you can actually control the power output of the flash. Um, but for most situations you'll want to leave it on TTL and let the camera deal with it. Auto bracketing set. Um, here you can select um, what gets bracketed with the auto bracket function. Um, standard is uh, exposure bracketing, that's what you use for um, HDR photos that takes under, over and uh, normal exposures. But you can also do it with white balance, you can actually have different white balance settings and uh, auto dynamic um, delighting, sorry, bracketing as well. So you can have different uh, delighting settings or one after another. Um, to be honest, I'd leave that on auto exposure bracketing. It's probably much more useful most of the time. Although the white balance bracketing could be really good as well if you're unsure of what white balance you need for a certain photo. Assign the timer and function button. Uh, the function button's on the front of the camera uh, on the left hand side. You can actually assign that button to do all these different things in here, which is really good. And there's quite a few here I'd actually like to have. Um, I've set mine to ISO sensitivity so I can change the ISO really quickly. Um, but I would also quite like bracketing on a separate button. So you just need to choose which one you think you're going to use the most and which one's the most useful for you. The next one we have is the assign AEL AFL button. Again, I'm going to do another whole video on this um, because this is quite an interesting button. Uh, there's lots of things you can do from back button focusing, which is that one, to just auto focus lock, just auto exposure lock, and just um, AEAF lock. At the moment I've set mine to AE lock hold, which means when you press the button it locks exposure and holds it there until you press the button again. The default is AE uh, AF lock. So I'll do another video on that another time. Reverse dial rotation, that just changes the way that the dials change things. So um, if you go left uh, it's usually minus, if you go right it's usually plus, you can change them around. Slot empty release lock, another really important one. Um, if you don't put a memory card in the camera, make sure you have it on lock and it will not let you take a photo. Um, if you have it on enable release, then you can be taking photos merrily away and then get home and realise you never had a memory card in the camera and there's no internal memory on this, so you can't record images without a memory card. So I'd always keep that on lock. It's been many times where I've been out before now and uh, got my camera at the back and gone to take a photo and then realised I didn't have a memory card with me. So keep that on lock to save yourself any embarrassments. And lastly for this menu is reverse indicators. Um, similar to the reverse dial, this just changes which way around uh, the meter reads. You can have plus on the left and minus on the right or minus on the right and, uh, sorry, minus on the left and plus on the right. It's up to you which way you prefer. Okay, next one is the spanner. This is the setup menu. And the first one over here is format memory card. Um, like I said earlier, the delete all is actually different. That just deletes images. This actually formats the memory card back to brand new. Um, so if you want to get rid of all your images quick, then you can do it that way. This one is monitor brightness. You can change the brightness of the LCD screen. There's a nice little uh, thing there to sort of demonstrate. I keep mine on naught, but again, it's up to you, whatever you want. Info display format. You can have it either the classic or the graphic. Um, they both look a little bit different. I'll show you the classic. That's the classic. And um, we'll just go back into it and go for the graphic. And that's the graphic. Uh, you can also then change the colours of each of those to whichever you prefer. So yeah, that's just up to you. Auto info display, and um, what this does when the camera's in sleep mode, if you half press the shutter button, it will automatically pop up with that screen. Um, so that's quite a neat little thing to have, it sort of shows you uh, exactly what settings are you've got just by pressing the shutter button halfway. Clean image sensor, obviously it speaks for itself, you can clean it now, and then you can either clean it at startup, clean it at shutdown, clean it at startup and shutdown, or turn it off completely. Um, I leave mine on that usually, just to help get rid of any dust. Lock mirror up for cleaning. You need this when you want to clean your sensor. Um, it opens up the mirror in the camera and reveals the uh, shutter. 
So you do that when you want to clean the sensor. Always make sure you've got a fully charged battery before doing that though. Video mode, I spoke about this earlier, you've got NTSC or PAL, depending where in the world you are. Um, depending on which one of these you have, you'll get different frame rates in your video. Um, I can't remember which country's which, so I'm just going to leave it on uh, PAL, because I think that's where it was. HDMI can change the uh, the output for your HDMI port on the camera. And this one, flicker reduction, again that is dependent on where in the world you are, I can change it to match your electricity supply and this will help stop any flicker in electric lights and that sort of thing. Time zone and date, obviously to set where you are in the world, uh, you can change the date format, daylight saving time etc. Language, easy. Image comment, uh, when you take a picture you can have a comment that automatically gets embedded into the XF, uh, the EXIF data um, you put anything you want in there, you get 36 characters um, so you can put your name or, or your address or phone number, whatever you want. Auto image rotation, um, with that on uh, the camera writes into the data of the picture what way around you are holding it so the picture always shows correctly um, when you get it onto a screen. So if you did a uh, portrait shot the camera would know that you took that in portrait so when you went to view it on your computer it would automatically flip it up the right way. Image dust off ref photo, um, if you're getting lots of dust spots in your pictures and you don't want to clean your sensor, you can actually do this. Um, this takes a picture, uh, sort of a blank picture and it maps where all the dust spots are and then it automatically overlays that onto any picture that you've taken um, in software and it will try and map out the dust spots for you. It's quite a long winded way of doing it, it's probably quicker just to clean the sensor but it's there nevertheless. Uh, GPS, if you've got a GPS attachment, you can set it all up in there. Firmware version, obviously tells you the latest firmware. Um, if you ever want to update it, you can do it from that menu as well. And then we're back to the start. Next one down is the retouch menu. So this is for images that you've already taken. You can actually edit them in the camera. I'm just gonna rush through these really quickly. Um, you can pick any image and then add uh, any of these things to it. So you've got delighting, red eye correction, you can trim, uh, put it in monochrome, you've got all these different filter effects, you can change the colour balance, you can overlay different images onto other images, uh, you can have two images overlaid and make a new image. Uh, you can process your raw files in here, um, you can see you've got all these different settings here that you can change and then you can actually save that uh, raw file as a JPEG, you don't even need a computer to edit them although I would always recommend doing it that way. Uh, resize, quick retouch is like an automatic thing. Straighten, distortion control, fisheye. You can add a fisheye effect to your photos if you ever want to do that. Color outline, color sketch, perspective control, miniature effect, so you can get that kind of tilt shift mini thing going on. You can also do that in video, which is quite cool. Selective color, please don't do that. And you can also edit your movies. And then lastly is your recent settings, obviously speaks for itself, that's just all the things that you've recently been to. Uh, so that's quite good to find, if you've been in a menu somewhere and changed something and you can't remember where you found it, you can just go in there and it should be uh, in here somewhere. Okay, so that's it for the D5100's menu. Um, hopefully that was of some help. If you have any questions on the camera or anything else to do with photography, just leave a comment below or go to my Facebook page or onto the website and I'll try and answer you as soon as possible. If you want a video on anything specific, um, if I haven't already sort of planned to make it, then just post it up and I'll try and make it for you. I've got loads more videos on this camera to come, um, how to use the different scene modes, the video, what the buttons do, anything to do with this camera, hopefully I will be doing a video on it shortly. So cheers very much guys, hope that was helpful and I'll see you all soon.